hi from team child warriors from cactus foundation of uh, from india and a warm welcome to all of you who watch our show i cannot believe it's the second episode already and i'm so thrilled and excited to host this unique distinctive and special show exclusively managed by child warriors from cactus foundation india and a big thank you for receiving the first episode with so much warmth and love thank you for the amazing messages comments views and likes childhoods need to be safe and filled with memories of uh, love care and safety however most children never get these basics of childhood um even today millions of children experience child sexual abuse and they keep suffering in silence we need more and more advocates for uh, creating safe childhoods thankfully we have a few unsung heroes without capes who are working relentlessly to create safe childhoods and advocate prevention of child sexual abuse um capeless superheroes is our way to thank uh thank uh, these people who are working passionately uh, you know to advocate and uh, prevent child sexual abuse and create safe childhoods capeless superheroes is also our means to get inspired and motivated so that um this generation become uh, this generation advocates prevention of child sexual abuse um as all of us are growing up it is an attempt to acknowledge the thankless and countless efforts made by uh, these unsung heroes who are working for children and childhood this is the humble way of thanking all the good they do so let's begin yet with another episode with another amazing and incredible um capeless superhero so here we go <laughs> So let's put our hands together for our cap- capeless superheroes Kimberly King an award winning author early childhood educator and sexual abuse prevention uh, facilitator with over 2400 plus reviews on Amazon about her best selling book I said no and her extensive work with children and adults on prevention of child sexual abuse she surely deserves to be on our list of capeless superheroes welcome kimberly a brave courageous and kind hearted friend to our second episode of capeless superheroes and i'm so so honored to interview here to interview you and start our discussion i'm so excited kimberly thank you for joining us Oh, thank you for having me and I am just so impressed with your child warrior group. I so I can't be, you're so well spoken and educated and I know you all are going to make this change. You will be change makers for preventing sexual abuse. So, um while I was researching about you, I saw your Instagram handle and it uh, the name was Tough Topics Mom. That is like a very interesting title. Um Why have you chosen this name? Can you share with us? Sure. So, I struggled with the name because it's all of my books are just so happen to be on difficult topics. Their sexual abuse prevention is a very tough topic for many parents to talk about. My other book is about divorce and that's also very hard to go through. And then my third book is about developing healthy habits and self-esteem which a lot of kids are missing. So everything I write about <clears throat> is considered tough, but my books and the way that I write them make the topics more approachable and easy to talk about. So that's an amazing way of choosing a name and it is also very relevant to the topics uh, you are talking about. Um actually most parents never attempt to have difficult conversations with their children um and all these conversations are mostly tough topics and i believe we all believe cactus foundation believes that these um topics uh, should be normalized um and like uh, these topics are mostly about difficult conversations such as body safety gender equality bullying 
prevention consent uh, sex education especially with children and why it is uh, you know highly important to normalize it and open communication for channels absolutely normalize such topics yeah it's really important to normalize <clears throat> all of these topics that you talk about and i think with body safety it's actually really easy but it's the parents that get sort of wrapped up in their heads because they have attachments they have like baggage and some parents have been sexually abused so it's hard it's really hard and most parents get stuck in fear so you all are eliminating the fear and i try to take the fear down to a manageable level where parents aren't scared to step in and start talking about it and when you think about it body safety is so easy to talk about if you start talking about it when your kids are little when you're teaching them like head shoulders knees and toes you might as well keep going and teach them the body parts and then when they're learning how to go to the bathroom on their own you can help them learn about consent and how to have boundaries and it's just an ongoing natural process and it really doesn't have to be scary but boy when you teach them these skills it is a layer of protection and and it will help protect your child from sexual abuse if you start early with these special skills that every child needs to know that's true absolutely children should be taught it's actually these uh, topics get simpler uh, if you teach children from a young age and i absolutely agree with that completely um for all those who aren't aware of kimberly uh, aware that kimberly has written over um has written two more tough topics book for ch- uh, kids when your parents divorce this is the sec- uh, second one and finding your fit this is the third one one deals with ira- uh, easing anxiety through the divorce of one's parents and the other is a great resource for self esteem and self and healthy identity while growing up um can you tell us how was the experience writing these two books for kids and uh, what was the response like so for writing the i said no book um i was motivated to write that from being a teacher i heard a lot of reports from my students about sexual abuse and i actually missed a report my first week of teaching and i'll never forget this a little girl came up to me in my classroom and tugged on my shirt and said miss king my dad took my cookie and i was busy and i just said oh well i'm sorry you took your cookie and i moved on but the next day she came back and she was crying and she said my dad took my cookie again And then I looked at her and I'm like, "Oh dear, something's wrong." And I said, "Where is your where is the cookie?" And she pointed to her private parts and you know, I just I felt so awful. But that that was the moment when I realized that like not all children really know the words they need to know to report. So, I taught my kids from an early age the correct body terms, boundaries, and like that if anything ever happened, it's not their fault. They just need to tell me so I can help. So those experiences motivated me to write the I said no book. Um the divorce book a little bit different. I was a child of a divorce and my parents got along in the divorce and cooperated. And I wanted to sh- share with other families that it is possible to get divorced but also to still be a family. And it's hard, but it can be done with the right support. And then the finding your fit book really is motivated by the struggles and stress that that kids go through today with the internet, with all the social media, with body image, bullying, the whole nine yards. It's hard to keep up and I just wanted to give kids some skills to help them reduce their anxiety and feel good about themselves. That's so kind of you um to write such amazing books for us and for our well-being. Um when I read your book I said no we re- I realized that at Cactus Foundation too we are doing the same thing everything that you have written uh, in your book the best part is the use of red flags and green flags we have been using it since 2011 in our classes isn't it amazing that two people from uh, two ends of the world in um with alignment and concept um 
and work for the same cause i found uh, nusrat uh, nusrat khan who is also a clinical psychologist started using the red uh, and green flag concept in 2011 uh, while she created our children first module for prevention of child sexual abuse she never read your book and you uh, and you both never met only yes yeah. <laughs> only last year um, when you sent us your uh, when you sent us your uh, when you sent us your book and she saw the flags in your videos um and there were the mentions of flags in the book right so i feel it were it was all destined for us to meet like this and Definitely. would you explain the concept of red flags and green flags to the audience while teaching body safety Sure. So, I came to it a little bit differently. So, my ex-husband was in the Navy and my kids used to love to watch the flags on the ship and each flag would mean something like danger or slow down or or whatever. They had signals for ships. So, red usually is associated with danger and green is usually associated with like going or moving forward or safety. So, the red and green flags, the concept really came to me from my son and the association association with the ships. Now, I think it's also red is such a powerful color and you can teach kids about their emotions through colors and i love just using the color wheel to sort of talk about feelings not just you know scary danger danger feelings but also you know there's like a thousand words you can use to describe your emotions and a color wheel can really help and simplifying it with red and green seem like a real easy way for kids to remember and incorporate their feelings I agree I agree with it uh, we also have like we feel that they understand the difference between unsafe and safe so i think there's a lot of uh, things in common between us you know? yeah definitely that's amazing what i particularly liked in your book how specifically you you uh, you speak of tricks threats secrets and bribes most adults intentionally and unintentionally try bribing kids <laughs> and it's been normalized so much that kids fail to understand that how bribes and threats can put you in an unsafe situation yeah absolutely and it's even as a teacher you know i i kind of we call it behavior modification in kindergarten when you're doing something good you get a sticker or you get extra recess or whatever but you know it is a bit of trickery and bribery that parents sometimes use with their kids so it's important to really clarify it like I'm going to give you a reward for doing something good that you would normally do like your chores. If you do your chores at the end of the week, maybe we're going to go on a special trip to the library. But the the really important focus on that is to get away from that bribery because it is definitely something that grooming people that groom children use and your children need to be aware that it can be used against them. That's true. I agree with it. Yeah. yeah like people take children for advan uh, children for advantage and can misuse them and that's totally bad and that's what we all are working for and it's sometimes so frustrating It to is. see that the people the adults are just not doing anything or taking enough effort to change something at least in their own family yeah um, all over the world children are treated as if uh, we don't have a voice of our own uh, we are so easily taken for granted i feel um, adults constantly keep deciding so many things for us without consent um, thank you so much for being our voice in so many ways kimberly i want to know um, how do we get people to hear children um, see them listen to them and value them and understand that they have a mind of their own and safe childhoods is a, is their basic right can you tell us how do you advocate ch- uh, child rights on a routine basis outside your work so that can inspire others too 
So yeah, I think it's really important to realize that every child is a, a human and absolutely has rights to their body from the beginning. And so teaching kids that they are the boss of their body, that they are in charge of their body, and that they have the right to say yes or no to any and all unwanted touch. Um, it's it's awkward for some parents because they weren't raised that way. So I remember around the holidays, I was always forced to give hugs to people. Like, go hug your Aunt Mary, go hug your grandma. And I didn't like hugging my Aunt Lavinia because honestly, her and, and this is a little silly, but her clothes smelled like mothballs. Do you know what mothballs are? Yeah. It's just that, that like closety smell. And I just didn't want to hug her. And when I refused to hug her, I got into trouble and I got yelled at. And so that really bothered me and it also laid a foundation for for me like not understanding consent like why can't i say no to what i don't want to do now yes parents do have to keep kids safe and so if your kid is going mom I i'm gonna go run in the street without looking <laughs> obviously you're gonna say no because safety is the primary focus so as a teacher i help parents learn that we have to model consent from the beginning and I model it in my classroom. So when a, a child comes into my classroom, I have a little chart and it says hi-fi, hug, or happy dance. And they just push the button that they want for the day. So if they want a hug, I give them one. And that's so good for the child. He can do whatever he wants. And he's yeah, because it's about choices, right? So safe choices is how I think we respect children's rights. We have to give children choices. That's true. That this should be followed everywhere in the world, and that's such a creative way of having different ways to greet the teacher instead of a forced way to just hug the teacher or um, shake hands or just say good or kiss the teacher on the cheeks. Uh, so I think this is a very creative way, and this should be followed by everyone in the world. What are some of the challenges you have faced while working in the field and how did you overcome them? So one of the challenges I faced was um, even my own family is, well, not anymore because I've been doing this for a while, but in the beginning they were embarrassed that I shared my story because part of the book, um, there is a story in the book about a babysitter and that was my story. So that kind of embarrassed parts of my family. And, you know, I think sometimes to make a change, we all have to get a little bit uncomfortable and we all have to share our stories. Okay, so it's not easy to talk about this stuff. Um, and I was a victim of sexual assault in college too. So I, I really, dove into like learning about the topic and helping others and didn't really feel comfortable speaking about it until I got to be the age of like 45. So the fact that you all are so comfortable talking about this gives me hope. I mean, there are a lot of obstacles for, for adults. <laughs> and I think when children get involved, everything just becomes easier and it's more simple. So... That was one big obstacle. Another obstacle um, is is getting the message out to the people that need to hear it. And I really, you know, on Instagram and mainstream media, that that's a good place to start. And I, I do think that you all will end up on Good Morning America or one of those really important shows because your message is so clear and concise and children are so powerful. And you all are just, I'm just so proud of you. <laughs> It's just amazing. Thank you so much and that's so brave of you uh, to you know, just tell your story because I know it's very difficult for others if they've experienced sexual abuse or sexual assault. Uh, it's so difficult for them to tell it to someone uh, because I believe that since childhood they have been suffering in silence because yeah. no one was there to hear them and uh, that's what we have to we are trying to make the change but it's not happening and right. i just hope someday there is a change a big change and we get uh safe childhoods for children that's our aim and i just hope it works out um what according to you is the biggest challenge that most kids face while growing up and how can they work to 
towards overcoming it? So I think in re- regards to body safety, the biggest risk is, and I see it every day, teenagers that are between the ages of like, well, even preteens, uh, between like 10 and 16, the social media, the availability for people to access them, and just what can happen online behind the screen is just scary. So I think that is like the red flag, you know, alarm bell going off. Um, Yesterday, just two towns over, there was a news report um, about a CNN, a person who worked for CNN, who was caught by the FBI soliciting children and participating in human trafficking and just two towns down. And people just don't understand how how it's prevalent everywhere, even in Connecticut. It, it can happen anywhere. So people really understanding the facts and putting down these myths is like so important. Yeah, people just believe in myths and uh, it's getting so dangerous for children like us, uh, teens and even below teens, like almost every all every child has a phone and yeah. they're so active on social media. I've seen my friends and it's like so scary. Um, but how much ever you try, they feel it's it's fun to be on it, right? But they're not understanding the consequences. Yeah, exactly. And I also think just for mental health and total well-being, Instagram and the cell phones, they just they pick away at your self-esteem because you end up comparing yourself to other people and there's that expression comparison is the thief of joy well if you look en- if you look enough at pictures of you know these people that spend 4 hours primping their hair to get the perfect shot and you know you're wasting your time because you are perfect just the way you are and a lot of kids don't feel that yeah actually um that is also where that is also because of which um you know people are like so even children of my age and below my age they put makeup and everything uh, just so that they become popular and ever you know and have that attitude kind of a thing because they're all online and then they are um, so active on social media it's so scary and um, that's all, also like a wasted of chi- uh, time and also it's so dangerous for all of them mm-hmm. um, Social Very media true. is something that, that is like um, it's, and it's also about not applying filters and no makeup. Mm-hmm. Um, even if they don't have any makeup on them, they will just put filters to, you know, glorify them and uh, beautify them because they feel that they are not beautiful enough. Right. Or, uh, you know, they are not good enough with the others and then they are not realizing that the others around them are also in the same situation exactly it's that's so true and um why don't you wear makeup because uh, in one of your introductions i saw that you know you have you never uh, wear makeup and that's so good uh, that's so brave of you <laughs> it is brave right <laughs> it's, world. it's like uh, so scary for others to go outside without makeup especially adult women teenagers. yeah you know I tried to wear makeup when I was 13 and I just didn't do it right and I had this curly hair and I didn't know what to do with it so my grandmother said to me just leave your hair alone leave your face alone you're beautiful the way that you are and I just, I said, okay. I mean, I know I, you know, what's funny though. I can walk outside and not wear makeup and people don't go like, oh, you look terrible. You look tired. But if you wear makeup every day and you wear a lot of it and then you go out without it, everybody's like, are you sick? What happened? <laughs> so maybe when I get a little older, I'll, I'll put some makeup on. But for now, I'm st- I have a, I stick with a chapstick. That's about all I have. So. I don't think you should. You already look so beautiful. Oh, uh, thank you. You're so sweet. Thank you so much. Um, you have authored three books, and you hold the Body Boss Bootcamp, uh, bootcamp trainings, and you are also a speaker on many forums. And uh, not to forget, you have so many um, colleagues and um, awards to your credit, which has been your dearest achievement. 
Oh boy, I guess so. The the most special achievement um, happened recently when I was invited to speak at the college that I attended. And so it is also the college where I had the sexual assault. So I was able to speak in front of like probably a thousand people wow. in a class about human sexuality. And I did a presentation and it was really cool because I was thinking to myself, these 17, well, they're 18 year old kids are learning from me about prevention and they're going to take that to their classrooms because they're going to be teachers or they're going to be doctors or they're going to be social workers and they're going to have this tool and it just it was like a complete circle it made me feel like there was closure and that I really had made an impact that's amazing uh, speaking in front of a thousand people and also um, it's true that you know um, like it must be so empowering that you changed your story by working for it and now you're trying to create um, a good environment and uh, educating them uh, these 18 year olds about all these things it is a way of you know we actually see our past and then we feel so proud of ourselves and I bet you must have felt that way about yourself. I was very proud, <clears throat> very proud about it. And I, I still, um, in my book, the preface is written by Dr. Sandy Karen, who is one of my colleagues who has been, you know, there's always somebody that inspires you to do more. She has been an advocate for women's health, you know, sex education, college athletes, and has been teaching this for years before anybody else really taught about it so she's been an inspiration to me and I'm just I just saw a video she produced with her college class and the the topic this topic you can't help but be proud of everybody that speaks up and shares and participates that's true that's really true um, yeah. if not a child uh, safety advocate or early years educator and author what would you be uh, uh, and why also do let us know as a child what did you aspire to become so i wanted to be a doctor <laughs> um and <laughs> my mother was very supportive and she said oh you you can do whatever you want to do you can be whatever you want to be my dad said, you know, I think you'd be better suited to be a teacher. And I guess there was a seed of doubt that was sort of laid down there when and I thought to myself, eh, you know, teacher, doctor, they're both important. Uh, they're, they both help children. I would have been a pediatrician had I gone that way. But they're both helpful, you know, really critical roles. Doctors just get paid, oh, about 100 times more than teachers. But, <laughs> but it's really not for me. You know, I have a passion and a calling to teach. I could have done it either way, but I think it's probably a good fit where I'm at. Yeah, that's amazing to become a doctor. And oh. <laughs> yeah, it's, those, bo uh, both of those professions are like so important. Um, apart from your child safety advocacy work, you are good at so many things. So, um, so everyone here, I want you to know that Kimberly was a competitive ice skater as a little girl. Um, do you still go ice skating? I do. Uh, I go skating like once a year, but it's not pretty. I, I mean, I can't do the things that I used to do. I used to be able to do like the twirls and the jumps and the spins. And now if I just like, you know, go around the rink a couple times, my legs are hurting. And I'm like, oh, I'm old, but I still love it. I do. It's so nice to be on the ice. It really is. That's so good. Um, that's an ama That's so amazing to do ice skating. It's great. Tell us more about who has been your biggest strength uh, in the journey of creating safe childhoods and uh, um, becoming a scapeless superhero that you are today. Who has been the biggest? I didn't hear you. Who has been your biggest strength in the journey of creating safe childhoods and the capeless superhero you are today? Uh, well, I think probably if I'm thinking about like who's inspired me to, to do more, and to be more, 
and to speak out more. Um, I am a good friend of Rosalia Rivera. She runs a company called Consent Parenting and I have learned so much from her and she really did, has helped me so much with helping me organize my kids class and helping me clarify my mission and where I can help. Um, and what's interesting is she, <clears throat> I never really thought about all of my books being connected and she's the one who pointed it out to me. So interestingly enough, if you are a divorced child, a child of a divorce, you are much more likely to be a victim of sexual abuse. So divorced parents, they're in a big risk category. And so that's an area where I'm trying to like focus on more because many divorced parents don't know don't know that they don't know they're at risk so i think that's uh, that's an aspect no one none of us have even looked into um and you know you are doing an amazing job and i think you uh you're focusing on something new related to the same cause and trying to now protect uh children who have divorced parents and that's like um yeah. You have three lovely children, and uh, now all they're all grown ups. What was the toughest part in uh, parenting kids, and how did you cope with it? So they're almost grown up. But I have a 17 year old. He's still in high school, but um, so he's my youngest, and he's he's been really easy. And I don't know if that's because he's the youngest, and you know the oldest child in the family gets the brunt of everything, right? We have to do. I was the oldest. So you get the most rules, the most flag, the most pressure, right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and then the middle child, you end up just, this is just my experience. The middle child tends to have more issues and problems. And then by the third child, you're just tired and you're like, oh, whatever. <laughs> but um, yeah, I guess for me, the, the challenge, the hardest part of parenting really happened for me with my son, Jack who he between the ages of like 15 and 17 really struggled with self-esteem issues anxiety and depression and I had to do a lot of research and didn't find a lot of support for him and mental mental health to this day it's still really hard to find good resources good doctors good therapists and feel like you're part of a community that's the missing piece i think for kids is that when they do struggle with mental health they're kind of like an island and they don't they don't really get the, the tribe that they need so that's the biggest challenge for me or it was um and mental health problems are challenges for for many parents it, in fact like at mental health hospitals 50 percent of patients are typically victims of sexual abuse so it's all connected that's true like they don't get uh like you talk so openly uh, but in india it's um so difficult to talk about it because it's mental health is a big stigma it's a taboo yeah. and uh, it's they think that uh you know if even if you have a profession uh, like a psychologist or a psychiatrist um it's something to be ashamed of because it is like you're treating people uh, who have gone crazy or mad. Right, right. But we need many of such people, psychologists and psychiatrists at this point of time. Because yeah. There are many survivors who need therapy and need someone for them to listen to. Um, Absolutely. Also, the kids' health also matters, right? Because they have, they will, they go through like so much of uh, trauma, and mm -hmm. then uh, uh, they need somewhere where they can just share about it to uh, someone without being judgment, uh, without uh, being judged by the person. Yeah, and the, it's so true. And I think the thing people forget with mental health is that it's not just like, oh, you've gone crazy. So it's a disorder of the brain, but also it's a whole person. So you have to treat the entire person. They need help with, you know, feeling included in the community, having friends, getting support, exercise, healthy food, you know, like all of those things, doing yoga and meditating and like being aware of your body and where you're feeling all that trauma. Like nobody puts it together and it drives me 
<laughs> it drives me crazy. <laughs> so yeah. it's a missing piece. They only think about the crazy part, not where the person needs to remove all his rage or frustration or sadness. Anything what that person is feeling to someone without being judged by a person. Yeah. So true. Um, Please name one capable superhero who uh, whose work and passion you really like and who inspires you. Oh, there's so many um you know, I love Janine Sanders. Uh her books are and I saw your interview, it was fabulous. She I love her and think she's truly a hero because she has branched out into every topic and yeah. so she's got a series of books her. that yeah, I feel like everybody needs all of her books. They're just they're amazing. That, and they're amazing. I have some of her books and they're so good and even she she's like so good. Yeah, um, she is. Now is the fun part which is the flash quiz time. Oh, I will what? ask you questions uh very quickly and then you have to answer it in 1 minutes time. Uh we need to finish it in 1 minute. So let's okay. I'm so excited for this section. Um <laughs> First is favorite hobby. Yoga. Um what who or what irritates you easily? Irritates me easily? Yeah. Uh noise. Noisy noisy people and noise. Okay. A uh, favorite quote? Favorite what? Favorite quote? Quote. Uh, I already said it. <laughs> Comparison is the thief of joy. I love that one. Ice cream or pancakes? Oh man, I would do ice cream chocolate. Wow, I love it. Teaching or writing? Teaching. Yoga or ice skating? Oh, it's yoga cuz it's safer. <laughs> <laughs> Tea or coffee? Definitely coffee. Your def uh, your favorite travel destination? Mm, favorite travel destination. So far, and I'm 51 years old. I lived in Italy. for 2 years and in Italy my favorite place in the world is a town called Terramina so beautiful mountains or beach huh i want both but <laughs> probably mountains uh day or night night i said no or finding your fit i said no but i should te- i should ke- treat all those books equally i just focus on i said no cuz i feel like it's a crisis so Wow, it was so much fun. I hope you enjoyed too. And for the last segment, which is ask your host, you can ask me any question which you want and I will answer it for you. Ask my host. Okay. What is your favorite subject in school? I believe wow. history. I don't know. There there is something about history. Um I just feel it's so easy to study and you get to know so much about your past and we are learning about new civilizations and i'm like they are like so much more better than what we are today they are so <laughs> organized and they are like so developed you know each aspect in their life it's so detailed even if it was for a limited period of time um uh, it's they are like so much more smarter than us it's just um it's just technology that is helping us today but at that point of time without technology they use their brains and then they are like so smart like e- we can take the egyptian civilization they had like pyramids and then with a little bit of knowledge of geometry addition and subtraction they can build such big pyramids it's like so interesting to learn and you know implement some of those things in the present life so i believe it's history oh that's perfect i like that good answer <laughs> So it's been such an inspiring time dear Kimberly many many thanks from Child Warriors of Cactus Foundation and all the kids around the world for being uh, we all thank you for being an amazing capeless superhero advocating for things that will create safe childhood all my love and thanks to the wonderful work you do and wow. 
you inspire me and so many other children thank you for writing your books with all your heart and using the kids perspective and language to achieve the goal of safe childhoods we love you and we salute your work your spirit and you are truly our capless superheroes thank you so much uh, so much kimberly thank you so much i appreciate you all so much thank you so much it's been an amazing time having uh, you here and we surely learn so much about you um finally so this is your host signing off and see you soon with another amazing capeless superhero don't forget to share like and comment on this video we really need a lot of love <laughs>